Well, everybody, we're back again here taking apart this tracker pipe organ. You can see from last time it does look considerably different. Last time all the pipes were still in it, and you got to take a look at uh, as much as we could see of the inner workings and how we take the pipes out and, and crate those up. So today we're going to continue on starting to dismantle stuff, and that'll give us a chance to take uh, an even deeper look at how a tracker or mechanical action organ works. So a little history. Um, obviously the first pipe organs had to have some kind of mechanical linkage between the key pressed by, down by the musician and the valves that open up to let the air into the pipes so that the pipes will speak. Later on they developed a system where a tube was used between the key and the valve. And that tube, the key would uh, be depressed, it would open up a valve there, and that would start the column of air in the tube moving. And when that started moving, it would open the valve at the chest where the pipes were, then open the pipe valve, and the pipe would speak. And this gave the advantage that the console, where the keyboards are, could be set back away from the pipes a little bit so that the organist had a little better chance of hearing what was really going on. And of course it wasn't very long then before somebody figured out, well, if we can use airflow in a tube between the key and the valve, we could also use electrical current in some way. And by the mid-19th century the rush was on to develop a system whereby uh, electrical contact would close, it would travel down the wire, that would open the valve, and the pipe would speak. And this, of course, allowed for the console to be anywhere you wanted it relative to where the pipes were. Now, the reason that all of these systems work on a pipe organ is because organ pipes are essentially just on and off. And so the pipe doesn't really care much what opens the valve, just that the valve opens and lets the air in. There are proponents of mechanical action organs like this one. Uh, a lot of organists feel more comfortable having that tactile feel. And there are even those that claim that, well, it's a superior system because blah, blah, blah. Well, we get right back down to the thing that the pipe is either on or off. Now, later on when I get to working on uh, different types of organs, I'll show you some of the different electric actions. But for now, we're just going to take a look at this mechanical action as we take it apart and we've also this organ includes some tubular pneumatic stuff so we can take a detailed look at that as well. So now we've gotten a little deeper in the organ we're looking at the front wind chest and over on the top here you can see this is the rack board the pipe sets through one of these holes and then sets on the corresponding toe hole. We also have out front here this rack where the pipe, some of the pipes were placed in a more decorative display. Back here on the wind chest they have to be in order according to where the keyboard is. So that lowest hole over there is the low C and then we work our way up and then the top notes of the rank are over here. Underneath the toe board, which is what we're looking at now, is the top board of the chest, the slider, and then the valve. Now in the middle here, we can see where the air comes out for the front pipes. So what happens here is when the valve underneath here, underneath, say, this, this toe right here, opens up, and then let's say, just for illustration, that pipe is actually over here. Well, what happens is this tube would carry the air from the toe hole or chest opening over to here and then give us the air in the correct position. This is not the same as the tubular pneumatic valve mechanism that I talked about. This tube is actually carrying the air that is going to make the pipe speak as opposed to carrying an airflow that will cause the valve to open. 
We'll look at the tubular pneumatic section of this later on. But I can now lift the top board off of this chest and we can actually look at the inner workings. Now with the tow board taken off, we can take a look at the inner workings of the stop mechanism. How a particular pipe is made to sound or not sound when the keys are played. Now we see this black board with these holes in it. These are the openings to let the air into the pipe, but you can see right now there's nothing but wood under there. If I were to reach over and pull the stop lever, now they line up with the holes in the top board and directly under those holes is the actual valve that opens up and then lets the air that's going to make the pipe speak into the uh, organ pipes that line up with those holes. We have the same thing over here for those stops that are tubed off and on down. So this illustrates the term stop. When the stop is in, the holes don't line up. Even though the valve may open because I'm pressing a key down, the particular set of pipes on this board are not going to speak. When the stop is out, all the holes line up, the air is allowed in, and that pipe is allowed to speak. So those of you who have used the term pulling out all the stops for a, for a party, well that's actually what it means. You pull out the stop to line up everything so that the pipes will speak. Directly behind that front rank of pipes, where some of the pipes were tubed off to be, make a display, we see the other three ranks of pipes, uh, the spaces for the other three ranks of pipes uh, in the rest of the chest. And again, this goes chromatic. It lines up more or less with the keys. And so the low notes are at this end and the high notes are all at that end. And in this case, all the pipes for the rank just simply line up uh, in rows. They go kind of a back and forth kind of thing going on down. And uh, the same uh, mechanism for turning them on and off is the slider. And here we can see the ends of the slider. This lever attaches to the draw knob on the console. And then that slider is either lined up uh, for open, lined up for closed, stop out, stop in. So now we can get a pretty good look at how this mechanism actually works. So here I'm going to hit the top key here. And you can see when that key moves, that dowel is pushed up by the other end of the key. And you can see the lever mechanism going back and forth and it pulls on a long lever that goes to the back side of the wind chest where there's another lever that takes that back and forth motion turning it back into an up and down motion and that's how the valve opens for that note and then of course we have four ranks of pipes as I showed you before and depending on which slider is open which stop is out that's the set of pipes whose top C will sound. Here's the other end of that. So here's where the sliders work. You can see I have this draw knob. Pull it out, stop is out, and that works on a lever mechanism there. Let's see if we can, yeah. You can see the rest of it going there. And it goes back in and again a lot of motion transfer with angles and things to get it to go in the correct direction. Now on top of that, there's an octave coupler. And then in the days of mechanical action, that was a fairly complicated thing. So that's what all of this additional material is here. If I pull it out, you can, there's the octave coupler drawn. I'm, watch what happens when I pull it. Now that additional mechanism is engaged, and when I hit a key, I'm only pressing a single key, but you see two of the levers are being actuated. And you can see that the upper key there is being, the octave up key is being actuated here. 
And that, my friends, is the basics of how a tracker action organ works. So one more thing before we finish this video for today. Show to the other end of the levers where the key works. And then here is the back end. So when you hit a key, this is what ends up happening. So there's the key movement, and there's the valve. That valve opens up into a channel, and the air is sent to potentially go into the four uh, pipes of each of the four ranks. So this is C, C sharp, D, D sharp. Okay. And then there's a note channel in this board of the chest, going the full length, and then the bottom board is about in here, and so forth. And that's basically all it is. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and make sure you hit that notification bell. There's a bunch of ways you can connect with me online. Please like and follow my Facebook artist page. It's Tony Imperatrice at Tony I, the Organ Guy. Also, you can subscribe to my website, TonyImperatrice.com, and you can receive exclusive behind the scenes content that you will get nowhere else if you go over and sign up on my Patreon page. All of these links are in the video description. Thank you.